But how about the biotically controlled precipitation? That's a completely different beast. So here we're talking about an organism that precipitate calcium carbonate for a function. If you look at these shells here on a beach, they're clearly precipitated for a function, which is protection in this case, to protect the animal from predation. That is a very complicated process. In fact, we don't have the time to go into the details here of biogenic calcite or carbonate precipitation because A, it's poorly understood still to this day, and B, it really, really is complex. What I want to show you is if you look at the crystalline structure of these um, calcite or aragonite, they're extremely complex. And you can see that multiple layers of the shells have different crystal orientation, and all of this is extremely controlled by the organism. So this is controlled precipitation. Now, when we talk about controlled precipitation, we can talk about two types of organisms that use controlled precipitation. One is heterotrophs. Heterotrophs essentially need a food supply to live. So they're a bit like us or like this great white shark catching a snack on his way out of the ocean. They need to feed. Now there's another type of organisms that also precipitate calcium carbonate, and those are autotrophs. So I find this footage spectacular. It's a sunken ship, it's the top of a sunken, sh sunken ship, and you can see on the top mast, the radar mast effectively, that's a World War II vessel, you can see that this mast is colonized by corals. Corals, just like the blue-green algae we talked about before, use light to grow, and so they take advantage of being at the top surface of this vessel to grow. If you were to dive deeper onto this vessel, there would be no corals because it would be too deep and the corals could not survive there. So that's an important concept here. So now if we go back to the concept of carbonate factory, we see that we can have three types of factories. One is known as the M factory. M stands for mud mounds or micrite. Remember, micrite is a carbonate mud, a very fine carbonate mud. The M factory is controlled or, or dominated by biotically induced precipitation. If we look at the biotically controlled factories, we distinguish two types of factories. One is dominated by heterotrophic organisms, like the shells we've seen on that beach. This is known as the C factory, C for cool water carbonates, but also for controlled precipitation. We will see that this factory is actually, in terms of volume, not very abundant, and it tend indeed to grow into colder waters. And then we have a factory that is dominated in volumes of sediments by autotroph organisms, things like corals, that basically produce a lot of calcium carbonates but need light to grow. And this is known as the T factory, T for tropical, because it tends to grow into the warmer waters, but also T for topmost water, precisely because it grows in shallow water where light penetration is uh, abundant and important. The T factory is by and large the most abundant factory that you will find in the rock record. So we'll spend quite a bit of time trying to understand this particular uh, type of, of factory. So again, if you were to draw a ternary diagram with these three factories, you would see that the C factory, the control factory, is completely controlled. It falls on the edge of the diagram uh, known as you know, controlled precipitation. The T factory has some controlled precipitation, but a lot of um, induced precipitation, and also quite a lot of abiotic precipitation. This is because the T factory is associated with a lot of cementation. The M factory is dominated by induced precipitation, but can also have cementation, so abiotic precipitation. So this ternary diagram between induced, abiotic, and controlled precipitation gives you a good sense of what the, um, the carbonate factories um, are, these three different factories. So that brings me to my summary. So why did we learn 
in this particular class? Well, first, we know that there's different types of precipitations. We also know that if we look at controlled precipitation, it's, it can be divided into heterozoan, so organisms that need food to live, and photozoan precipitation, which is organisms that need light to grow. Photozoan form the tea factory, and they are actually the main producers in terms of volume of, of carbonate. This is why it's so important, if you want to understand carbonate, to understand what controls photozoan precipitation. We've talked about carbonate factories as being the locus of precipitation, where most of the carbonate precipitation occurs. We talked about the T and the M factory that are the most abundant factories. The T factory is the most abundant factory of the Phanerozoic, but we will see that the M factory is abundant in the Paleozoic. So, okay, now one thing that is important to realize is that the, the concept of factory is really an N-member concept. In fact, you can have precipitation of abiotic, controlled, and uh, induced carbonates in all three of the factories, but we can distinguish between M, T, and C factory based on which one of these process is the most abundant. So don't lose sight of this. Okay, that's it for this class. Next time, we'll look more in-depth at these different factories and what controls them. Yeah.